Gundam.tk presents Gundam Exia. Hey, what's up everybody? It is Robert184, and I'm here today with a review of the Gundam Exia 160th scale non-grade. This kit came out right when Gundam 00 started airing, just a couple months after, in 2007, and it sells for a whopping 4,500 yen or $45. I usually prefer 1 100th scale, which is one of the reasons why I didn't buy this, amongst uh, the feeling that it was a little bit cheap, but because I'm going to be getting the perfect grade double O riser in the very near future, I thought I'd build a non-grade and compare the two and see how much better a perfect grade really is. The box tour goes top to bottom with Exia showing some scenes from the first episode, and then some story and a picture of the actual size of the Gundam, which you can agree is pretty huge. The rest of the box shows off the long blade and short blade. Of course it comes with the GN sword which can switch into rifle mode. A not very good looking pose with its legs apart. It shows off that you can move the uh, antennas on the chest. And then it comes with all four of the beam sabers, too long, too short, as well as coming with clear parts and then an interesting hand mechanism which I'll talk about and then it shows off some of the extra parts including soft purple parts which are very similar to what was on the 1 100th non-grade and there are all of its weapons. Another thing I should note is that when you look around the box you're going to see pictures that are uh, done up that look very similar to the unpainted Exia that they show you and they should always show you of course but what I was impressed about this is that they actually didn't have their pro modelers really touch this up. So if you look around the mouth of Exia, it's not painted gray. They've just lined it very, very lightly. So that sort of gave me the impression that you'd have to do a lot of work with this to make it look better. But on the other hand, it's not like they're deceiving you with the box shots, so I think that's actually a plus. When you crack the box open, you're going to get a sheet of stickers, an instruction manual, and of course a lot of plates, and not that many. But the interesting ones um, the A plate has a lot of clear parts, and you can see the leftover green, because I used my Tamiya green clearer to paint over those, as well as yellow, red, and blue. But what's sort of cool if you've built the 1 100th non-grade Exia is that it comes with these bendable purple parts, which you can take off and put in the arms and legs, and look very good, and you also get the four beam savers, which are very, very long. When you look through the manual, I think you really get the impression that these 160 non-grades, they're really made for a younger audience, and it's a very different audience from the perfect grade, and I think you can see it in the manual. First of all, you get a lot of very simple directions on how to put it together. It's broken down by section very clearly, and they show you how to make some of the more difficult cuts. When you look at the plates, you're going to get main plates up to M, and then you're, you're going to get the beam sabers, polycaps, and purple parts left over. And what's really nice about this is that it's in color, and it's very, very simple. So you have a chest, and then you make it, and I think anybody could put this together. So a 10-year-old kid, just watched Double O, liked Exia. This is going to be something that he's going to enjoy for the size, but also because it's an easy build. Then you get a page of story, which is a real flashback to the first season of Double O, including some shots of the characters. And once you work your way through, there's not a lot of line art, not a lot of fancy stuff. It's more to the point, so I think that this is actually a pretty good manual. And on the back, you do get a paint guide and a back shot of the Exia. One plus of the Exia with the stickers is that it actually was pretty cool because instead of just being plain black or green, they gave you things that say GN Exia all over it, and it looks pretty sharp once you actually put it on. And so all of these parts are going to go under the clear parts, and if you leave them as that, I think it'll look okay. But I chose to paint mine green, of course, just because I have the paint kicking around. Now, these two green stickers are going to go on the back of the GN drive, and there are two gray parts, and they are going to go on the waist, so that could have been gray parts, but they went with stickers. And it also goes on the chest you can just see it up here that there's gray parts but they're mostly covered up so I don't mind the fact that they went with stickers there. All put together what are you gonna get? Well you're gonna get the GN blades long and short, two legs with the feet attached, shield, four beam savers which was great, arms and shoulders as one unit, the waist section, the chest, and I put the head on that and just to give you an idea there's a very quick size comparison with a 144th scale first grade. When we look at the parts, the first thing you're going to notice is if you built the 1 100th, 
is they're practically identical in design and implementation. So when you're building this, yeah, well, it feels like a little bit of deja vu, which is another reason why I didn't get it. With the legs, very simple. You're going to be able to bend this here, so you get a decent bend with the upper leg, two pivot points, and nothing fancy. This does not move. As far as down here, this is the sticker underneath where you can see the writing, and I've just put on some glitter paint there. This is not a sticker, it's gray parts, and this is the soft purple part which you'll insert. As far as the feet, this was a bit of a disappointment. Yep, they're just a big fat block on a ball joint. The waist section is very, very simple. Independent skirts left and right. This is a red piece, not a sticker, and these are gray stickers, as I mentioned. On the back of the armor, you have a beam saber attachment, which is sort of cool because you can bend this off to the side so he can pull the blades out. And you'll notice that I did my my lining here in black instead of gray. Now the chest unit for this feels huge, and overall I'm more impressed with the quality than I thought I would be. Uh, I never show this off, but thanks for all the people that pointed out. When you open this out, you get a much bigger than usual 160th scale uh, sets an AFSA sitting inside, and this cockpit hatch pulls forward as well as bending. So that works pretty cool. This is painted green with the sticker underneath, and you can see underneath that it talks about Exia black lining. I did not line around this red part here. In the back, you have green stickers under here, but if you want to paint that green, I think it looks a little bit better. And as far as shoulder mobility goes, you can move this fairly well and a little bit of up and down motion, but it doesn't open up the chest too much. The arms scream 1 100th grade, and over here you have the soft purple parts, which work well when you're bending the arm up and to the side. Some black lining there, very, very simple shoulders, just two pieces slapped together. It bends there. The elbow is going to give you a 90, nothing more. Again, a sticker painted green, and this is also a gray sticker which shows off the weapons on the forearm. And the hand was very, very cool when you put it together because when it's on the sprues, what you actually do is you just take this part and the fingers are all lined up and you put the palm onto the fingers and then just slap this back plate on. So very cool with that and the fingers bend very well and I kept my three fingers together. But you'll notice down here on the palm, one more thing is that they have two pegs, which is great for keeping the weapons in place. We all know that the Exia is all about melee weapons, so here's the GN blade short and the GN blade long for a bit of a size comparison. Very, very simple, a black part here, blue, and then a handle, which is a little tricky to line, but you can see the two notches there, which are going to make it stay in the hand very, very well. As far as the beam sabers go, there are a few parts, a part up here, and you put a, mid a part into the middle of it, put some lining on there, again, you can see it where it attaches to the hand, and for a length comparison, there's the short blades compared to the long blades. Now, the actual GN Sword 1, which seems like it's been a long time since I haven't been thinking about GN Sword 3, is very, very simple. But you've got a big blue piece, a big white piece, put some lining in there. And it does actually have a little bit of cool movement here as the handle slides into a groove there. But you're not able to bend this blue part down, which in a way isn't a bad thing because it gives it some more stability. And there you have the gun. And then when you bring the blade forward, you're going to get something this long. And probably my biggest complaint about this is just how plain this GN Sword 1 looks. And for length, there it is. But if you had some silver spray paint and put that on, I think this would look a lot better. The shield could not be any simpler, just a black base, put some blue parts on the side, a white part in the middle, and this is all lined. So no stickers here. And on the back, you have a very simple mount mechanism that pivots and is going to lock into the forearm right there. Finally, the head was one of the reasons why I did not buy this Gundam in the first place, despite sort of really wanting it to. And the very simple reason is, is that this part here, around the mouth area, has to be painted gray or lined. And the problem is, if you're building a small high grade, or even the 1 100th, I got away with just using a lining marker, but something this big, if you don't paint it, I think it's not going to look very good. So very simply, even though I don't like painting, I went out and I bought some acrylic paints in this case because they're water soluble, and I just painted around there and it came out better. When you zoom in, it doesn't look great, but from a distance, it actually looks good and makes the head look way better than I expected. I'm not sure if I should have put black lining in there, but otherwise this head is very simple. And my only complaint being on the master grade, you have some very nice cool purple parts off to the side of the head, but here it's just plain white. So if you didn't put gray around the mouth and you didn't put any lining in here or paint that purple or gray, you'd have a very white, blocky-looking, boring head. 
I'm going to take a break and eat some oranges, so everybody stick around for part two of my review of the 160th Gundamexia. Nobody's laughing at first grade Exia now, are they? <laughs>